This is a video showing how to optimize curve fitting for a graph within PASCO Capstone. So I have set up my signal generator to produce a frequency of 1000 Hz with an amplitude of 1 volt. I'm capturing this display by using a scope display and I've changed things to the fast monitor mode which is the mode that's required for the use of the oscilloscope. I've also selected the trigger for this uh, display. That's done by selecting this um, arrow pointing to the line up above. There's a couple different ways that you can configure the trigger, but in this case I want a positive edge. So to start data collection, I'm going to go ahead uh, and click on the monitor. So what that will do is that it starts to trigger on uh, data collection as soon as the voltage reaches the trigger level. So you can move the position of the trigger while data collection is going on and I'm going to have it push this very slowly up through the top of this display until the display freezes because my trigger is above the actual value that we're looking for. With this static trace I'm going to go ahead and click stop. I've chosen my time domain here such that I only have a few peaks that will make sure that I have enough uh, data but will also make sure that I don't have too many peaks so that my solution will still converge. Next, I'm going to save my trace so that I can then display it on a graph. So I'll click on this uh, rainbow triangle with the upward pointing arrow. I've got some previous traces recorded here, so I'm going to go over to um, create a new page. In this case, I'm actually going to display a graph now, so I'll double click on the graph on the right hand side. On the vertical axis, I'm going to select my voltage. Um, I'm actually uh, monitoring the voltage from my 850. And you can see a digitized version of the graph uh, that we saw before on the scope. I'm now going to um, select my curve fit. I'll do that by clicking on the right side of this curve fit portion here. And I'm going to go down to a user defined function. I've previously put in uh, this form of this function as a times cosine of parentheses, second parentheses, 2 times pi times f times t, close parentheses, plus phi, close parentheses, close parentheses. Now, I'm not very good at finding these on the keyboard, but if we actually go and take a look within the um, a display, so I'm going to go ahead and click on my display here. Once this is selected, you can see that a new icon has appeared on the left hand side, which is the Curve Fit Editor. So if I click on this, you can see that um, even though these are displaying the great characters, I'd actually type these in as pi and then also as phi. So my initial guesses here are quite bad. Um, so if I click on Apply for this, it's going to have a hard time converging. Um, it's selecting an A value of 83, which doesn't really make sense because, well, if we take a look at the display here, I'm only at a maximum value of 1. So to help this converge, I'm going to go ahead and click on the lock for my amplitude of 1, which makes sense because that's where my graph is. And then we can go ahead and click on Update Fit again. So you can see that we've now got a marginally better fit. So another thing that we can also do is if we know about what the frequency of the signal is, we can put that into um, this value here. Um, if you are recording an external source that you don't know the input frequency, um, we can actually take the period between these two waves and then um, take the reciprocal um, and determine the frequency and put that in for this value. Well, given the fact that I set the signal generator to 1000 Hz, I can then lock this value in. Now when I go ahead and click on Update Fit, it's going to converge much better. Um, we can see that the phi value is um, much tighter in here. Um, so what we can now do is unconstrain some of the other values that we have for the curve fit. Um, we've kind of approached the convergent solution within the space. We'll go ahead and deselect this and click on update fit again. And you can see that um, we still have very very small values here for the errors and then finally we can release the, the last locked value and update fit again. And you can see that our solution has converged very well um, from the initial condition of where we um, had a uh, three locked condition, or sorry, rather two locked conditions close to um, what we had guessed, and then removing those constraints until we have the best curve fit model.